I am one month into making my indie game Reverse Rolls Cut the Rope, where instead of cutting the ropes, you are the ropes as you swing around an awesome soft body squishy environment to reach the goal. Today I want to share with you the past two weeks of development hell adding rockets to this game. I thought this would be a quick and easy fun new feature I needed to solve a secret issue with this game I've been having, and I've been too scared to tell anyone about this before. But instead, it uncovered something that made me almost quit development on the whole game. Everything else in this game is themed around stationery, pens, crayons, tape, etc. So we need to find a thing that everyone has lying around in their office that we can use as inspiration for something that can let us fly through the levels. That's right, a Vulcan Centaur Advanced Cryogenic Evolved Rocket Launcher thingy thingy. See, I knew I had one of those lying around. I took some inspiration from some paper plane designs, but just as I was about to give it a go, I rotated it to see how it would be if we launched it in any different direction, and... Bad, 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 bad. But it's pretty good. Bad, bad, no, it's terrible. Yeah, I understand why all rockets in games look like this now. After some slight remodeling, I think it's a really nice cross between the two. Without the inspiration of context, it does look a bit weird, but I'll deal with that in a really clever way. It's my game, I'll make it look however I want, even if it's terrible, shut up. Dropping the art into the game and playing with it for a few seconds is a fun way to procrastinate, but we really need to be figuring out how this rocket should actually work, because there are so many options. Huh. We want to start with a simple prototype and build up all the craziness from there. So, here's the rocket in its own sandbox environment, and first we need to get it moving. And, as simple as that might seem, this is already a huge problem that I don't know how to solve. Do we want the rocket to be physical objects that can bounce around off the level one thing onto the other in different directions? The other idea would be to let the rocket shoot off in any direction, but not interact with anything, kind of like a superpower with no collisions, it just flies away to victory no matter what. Starting with the easiest of the two, I'll come back to the impossible one later. The super rocket needs gravity turned off and to simply be told to move in some direction with some speed when it's made. We fought hard earlier for rotatable rockets, so let's probably fix this as well, please. Now to attach this player to the rocket, we have another problem. Currently, the code is set up to only allow me to hold ropes onto what I have called rope holders, but now we want to hold the rope on a rocket, which definitely looks a little bit different, and I'm not quite sure the game would think they're the same. And it doesn't, because clicking to attach onto this rocket does absolutely nothing. No! However, the solution to this is actually really fun. The current rope holder is really a thumbtack that I have told the game is what a rope holder is. You might think this is fine, but if we're being all pernickety about it, you're probably doing this in your games as well, but this is actually wrong. This rope holder isn't a rope holder. It's a thumbtack that has the ability and just so happens to be able to be the thing that can hold ropes. Now you can see the rocket is also a new thing that can hold ropes. So let's just look for these things that can hold ropes instead of just the thumbtack. Last video we saw an example exactly like this with a moving rope holder when we made the flinging tape flinger. So everything with a rocket should just work fine without any additional effort. What it Oh. Best I can tell here is the we're Spider-Man grabbing this poor rocket and pulling it towards us, instead of the exact opposite that we want where the rocket pulls us towards it. Mind you, this isn't the worst thing I've ever done. I don't like this solution at all. It's only because it works that I'm even remotely considering this. I hate this so much. Well, luckily for me, I don't have to like how something works. I just have to like that it does. I do get to not like that this doesn't work, however. I swear, I think I'm getting something working and I break 10 other things in the process every time. The problem here is pretty obvious though. The rocket flying through the rule and the ball not going through the wall is a problem. Luckily for us, if you look at the ropes here, they give us a clue about how to fix it. The ropes, although they can wriggle and twirl around, they can't grow and shrink. And as soon as the rocket gets too far away, the rope is pulled so far it comes off the player and it's no longer visually even connected to it anymore. I'm imagining this rope is probably under an insane amount of pressure. So what can we do to put it out of his misery? Well, almost poetically for the game this game was inspired from, we need to cut the rope. This took a few attempts of hilarity because of how bouncy everything is, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. Are we safe for more problems now, please? I haven't seen my family in three days. You can see why I almost quit. Here's another problem we just caused with a potentially game-changing issue. We can no longer make it up to this rope holder because ropes break through walls, which is absolutely the right thing to do. No issues there. But we still need to actually get up there somehow. Okay, so let's add this rock and take us up there and... We used too much juice and it's long gone before we even get the chance to click on it. Get good is certainly a solution here. I'll design the levels however I want and if you can't beat them then that's your problem and no refunds thanks. And hopefully you'll agree that's not the best solution. Especially when I've thought of one that's much better. This rocket isn't broken. I've just introduced a new type of rocket that waits for you to attach to it before it goes anywhere. So remember earlier when I said this rocket type was the easiest of the two? I wish I was joking. First of all we now actually do want to Spider-Man grab it to make it move. So my favourite bug fix has to be undone. Oh no! What we're going for here is to make the rocket rotate around the player and spin with them around the thumbtack. Is this possible? I have no idea, but that has not stopped me before. Let's give it a go. It turns out that the main reason the rocket doesn't act very rockety is that the weight of the rope itself is weighing it down. If we make the mass of the rope close to zero, you can see the rocket flies off just as it should do. We also have the issue right now of when we attach a second rope to something else, we don't rotate the rocket at all. It just moves weirdly and gets stuck or completely tanked by the weight of the longer ropes. I think to combat this, we need to give the rocket more power when it's carrying more stuff. This seems intuitive and like it would make sense, hopefully, but maybe 
being able to drag rockets down is actually a good thing. I'm not sure. I'd love to hear what you think, but personally, this is exactly what I had in mind for the rockets, and I love it. For the physics rocket that doesn't start until it's attached to, I don't think it makes sense for it to be stuck in place like the other rockets. So I'm going to turn gravity back on for it and see how it goes. I've been really looking forward to this, and of course, we need to know what happens when you attach two opposite rockets, very cut in half style. Maybe as expected here, the rockets of equal power, nothing much happens other than them falling to their doom. And a pretty fun new level idea, swinging off this rocket, how awesome is that? Attaching two super rockets though is where it gets really interesting because nothing we do to them stops them from pulling us apart until eventually the first rope breaks. Just give it a minute, the code we wrote earlier should absolutely work here for when the ropes get too far apart and too much tension and they break. Okay, what the fuck? They're not breaking, I don't know why. I mentioned earlier that I'm adding rockets to this game for a reason I haven't told anyone yet. The truth is, I'm scared this game isn't fun. I love messing around with squishiness and the physics and all the swinging, but I'm not sure how to pull this into a cohesive game for someone to actually enjoy playing. Sometimes you'll spend hours trying to fix a bug, and then realize that the game would be better off if you didn't. What do I mean by that? Because that sounds insane. Because I got so caught up trying to make the ropes break when you're holding two rockets, I forgot to ask if we should even be able to hold two rockets in the first place. You may initially think this is a cop hunt solution, but really think about it, and I think you'll realize there is not a single situation or a level design that I can come up with where you'd actually want or need to be able to hold two rockets at the same time. It's really important to take a step back for some perspective sometimes, and I'm really glad I did, because now I can move on to the actually really fun part of game development, and everyone's favourite when adding new stuff to a game. We really want to make these rockets feel powerful, so I reused this amazing particle pack from the time I made Angry Birds in 3D, and modified it to work for 2D for this amazing smoke train they called Fire Breath. It may be a bit overkill, but it is awesome. We also need to remember that the rockets have to fit the soft body theme and squish a little every time we attach or detach from them. Does it make sense for a super rigid metal rocket to squish like this in real life? Absolutely not. And that's why I did it. Imagine if you will, you're an Omnom, all excited for its big launch in T-3, 2, 1, boom! It's the biggest moment of your life, everything is going amazingly, and then you suddenly realise you've made a huge mistake as you fall back to Earth, as you eventually squish so hard into the floor you explode into a million little pieces. First of all, who is leaving all these super powerful rockets lying around their desk? I know at least one idiot. And secondly, but most importantly, how can we save Omnom from this new rockety doom? I am of course talking about a parachute, a new ability that slows your fall for a graceful landing, inspired by the increased air movement ability of the paraglider from the world and tears of the kingdom stuff like that. Just like in those masterpieces, the parachutes need to be freely available whenever you need it, so it's no good if it's on the ground like this when we need it all the way up in the air, that's the whole point. I decided to map them to the space bar for now, so anytime you're in the air, you can press space to abandon any ropes you currently have and glide to safety. After adding hammer space to make this parachute always available, a really interesting question that follows from this you might have been asking yourself is what else can we put in there? Maybe when you press space bar you could spawn a rocket that saves you instead. This game still has so much potential so please consider subscribing and following the game at the link below to help it launch into orbit. And if you just can't wait until the next video, then check out the last video and adding all the squishiness you saw in this one. It's a personal favorite of mine. I love it. Look at this boing 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 boing. Happy coding everyone.